4. Gun Control Trump has actually sworn to safeguard the Second Amendment and gun ownership considering that taking office. He spoke at the National Rifle Association's yearly convention in 2019, and he assured to ban a measure passed in February 2019 by House Democrats to strengthen background checks. Nevertheless, Trump has also at times stated he would want to think about a variety of steps to restrict gun gain access to. His administration likewise prohibited bump stocks in October 2017 after a mass shooting at a Las Vegas music festival left 58 individuals dead. The Valentine's Day 2018 shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, which left a total of 17 students and professors dead, stimulated a strong reaction from Trump. He purchased the Justice Department to release policies prohibiting bump stocks and suggested he wanted to think about a series of procedures, from enhancing background checks to raising the minimum age for buying rifles. He likewise backed an NRA-fueled proposal for arming teachers, which drew backlash from lots of in the occupation. The president remained invested in the concern even as the normal cycle of outrage began diminishing. In a televised February 28 meeting with legislators, he required gun control legislation that would expand background checks to gun programs and web deals, safe and secure schools and restrict sales for some young adults. At one point he called out Pennsylvania Senator Pat Toomey for being scared of the NRA and, at another, he suggested that authorities ought to seize guns from psychologically ill or other potentially dangerous individuals without very first litigating. I like taking the guns early, he said. Take the guns first, go through due procedure second. His stances seemingly stunned the Republican legislators at the meeting, in addition to the NRA, which formally considered the president as a strong fan. Within a few days, Trump was walking back his proposition to raise the age limit and mainly pushing for arming choose teachers. In June 2019, Trump stated he would think about a ban on weapon silencers following the deaths of a lot's people, who were eliminated by a shooter at the Virginia Beach Municipal Center. Two months later, after back-to-back -back mass shootings in El Paso, Texas, and Dayton, Ohio, the president recommended tying broadened background checks to migration reform legislation. Donald Trump offers two thumbs approximately the crowd on the fourth day of the Republican National Convention on July 21, 2016, at the Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland, Ohio. Trump in Mexico, border wall, Trump released an executive order to construct a wall at the United States border with Mexico. In his very first telecasted interview as president, Trump said the preliminary construction of the wall would be moneyed by U.S. taxpayer dollars, but that Mexico would repay the U.S. 100% in a strategy to be worked out and may include a suggested import tax on Mexican products. In response to the brand new administration's stance on a border wall, Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto canceled a prepared checkout to consult with Trump. Mexico does not believe in walls, the Mexican president said in a video declaration. I've said time again, Mexico will not pay for any wall. After funding for the wall failed to emerge, from either Mexico or Congress, Trump in April 2018 announced that he would strengthen security along the U.S. border with Mexico by using American soldiers since of the terrible, hazardous laws that left the nation susceptible. The following day, the president signed a proclamation that directed National Guard soldiers to the U.S.-Mexico border. The Department of Homeland Security stated that the implementation would be in coordination with GOVs, that the troops would support federal police personnel, including Customs and Border Protection, and that federal migration authorities would direct enforcement efforts. In December 2018, quickly prior to a newly chosen Democratic majority was set to take control of the House, Trump announced he would not sign a bill to money the government unless Congress assigned $5.7 billion towards building his long-promised border wall. With Democrats declining to succumb to his need, a partial government shutdown occurred for a record 35 days, up until all sides accepted another attempt at striking a compromise. On February 14, 2019, one day prior to the deadline, Congress passed a $333 billion spending package that assigned $1.375 billion for 55 miles of steel post fencing. After indicating that he would sign the expense, the president made good on his threat to declare a nationwide emergency the following day, enabling him to funnel $3.6 billion slated for military building and construction jobs toward developing the wall. In response, a coalition of 16 states filed a claim that challenged Trump's power to circumvent Congress on this concern. Contrary to the will of Congress, the president has used the pretext of a manufactured crisis of illegal migration to declare a nationwide emergency situation and redirect federal dollars appropriated for drug interdiction, military construction and police initiatives towards constructing a wall on the United States-Mexico border, the suit stated. After the House voted for a resolution to overturn the nationwide emergency situation declaration in late February, 
The Senate did the same on March 14 when 12 Republican senators joined a unified Democratic side to elect the resolution. Trump immediately issued the very first veto of his presidency the following day, calling the resolution a vote versus truth. In late July 2019, the Supreme Court reversed an appellate decision and ruled that the Trump administration might start using Pentagon money for building throughout the ongoing lawsuits over the issue. Border Separation Policy As part of attempts to seal the U.S. border with Mexico, the Trump administration in 2018 started following through on a zero-tolerance policy to prosecute anyone discovered to have crossed the border unlawfully. As kids were legally not enabled to be apprehended with their moms and dads, this implied that they were to be held independently as family cases wound through migration courts. A few were taken place after reports emerged that almost 2,000 kids had actually been separated from their parents over a six-week duration that ended in May 2018, intensified by photos of toddlers crying in cages. Trump at first deflected blame for the situation, insisting it resulted from the efforts of predecessors and political challengers. The Democrats are forcing the breakup of families at the border with their awful and vicious legal program, he tweeted. The president ultimately caved to pressure from the bad PR, and on June 20 he signed an executive order that directed the Department of Homeland Security to keep households together. I didn't like the sight or the sensation of households being separated, he stated, including that it remained important to have absolutely no tolerance for people that enter our country illegally and for Congress to find a long-term solution to the problem. In the meantime, the DHS essentially revived the catch and release system that the zero tolerance policy was implied to eliminate while handling the logistics of reuniting families. 5. Travel ban. President Trump signed among his most questionable executive orders on January 27, 2017, calling for extreme vetting to keep extreme Islamic terrorists out of the United States of America. The president's executive order was put into effect right away and refugees and immigrants from seven mainly Muslim nations traveling to the U.S. were detained at U.S. airports. The order required a restriction on immigrants from Iraq, Syria, Iran, Sudan, Libya, Somalia and Yemen for at least 90 days, briefly suspended the entry of refugees for 120 days and disallowed Syrian refugees forever. In an interview with the Christian Broadcasting Network, Trump also stated he would offer priority to Christian refugees trying to get entry into the United States. After dealing with multiple legal difficulties, Trump signed a revised executive order on March 6, 2017, calling for a 90-day restriction on travelers from six predominantly Muslim nations including Sudan, Syria, Iran, Libya, Somalia, and Yemen. Iraq, which was included in the original executive order, was eliminated from the list. Tourists from the six noted nations, who hold green cards or have legitimate visas since the finalizing of the order, will not be impacted. Religious minorities would not get unique choice, as was detailed in the initial order, and an indefinite restriction on Syrian refugees was reduced to 120 days. On March 15, simply hours before the modified restriction was going to be put into effect, Derek Watson, a federal judge in Hawaii, released a temporary across-the-country restraining order in a ruling that mentioned the executive order did not prove that a restriction would protect the country from terrorism, and that it was issued with a function to disfavor a specific religion, in spite of its mention consistently neutral function. At a rally in Nashville, Trump reacted to the ruling, saying, this is, in the opinion of numerous, an unprecedented judicial overreach. Judge Theodore D. Chuang of Maryland also blocked the ban the following day, and in subsequent months, the restriction was hindered in choices handed down by the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit in Richmond, Virginia, and the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals as soon as again. Nevertheless, on June 26, 2017, Trump won a partial victory when the Supreme Court announced it was enabling the questionable restriction to go into result for foreign nationals who did not have a bona fide relationship with anyone or entity in the United States. The court consented to hear oral arguments for the case in October, but with a 90 to 120 day timeline in place for the administration to perform its reviews, it was thought the case would be rendered moot by that point. On September 24, 2017, Trump provided a brand new presidential proclamation, which permanently prohibits travel to the United States for the majority of residents from seven nations. Most were on the initial list, including Iran, Libya, Syria, Yemen, Somalia, while the new order included Chad, North Korea and some people of Venezuela, particular federal government officials and their households. The tweet did little to pacify critics, who argued that the order was still heavily biased towards Islam. The truth that Trump has added North Korea with couple of visitors to the US, and a few federal government authorities from Venezuela doesn't obfuscate the real truth that the administration's order is still a Muslim restriction, stated Anthony D. Romero, the executive director of the American Civil Liberties Union. On October 10, 
the Supreme Court cancelled a planned hearing on an appeal of the original travel restriction. On October 17, the day before the order was to take effect, Judge Watson of Hawaii issued an across-the-country order freezing the Trump administration's new travel restriction, writing that the order was a bad suitable for the concerns relating to the sharing of public safety and terrorism-related information that the president recognizes. On December 4, 2017, the Supreme Court allowed the third version of the Trump administration's travel restriction to go into effect regardless of the continuous legal difficulties. The court's orders urged appeals courts to figure out as rapidly as possible whether the restriction was lawful. Under the judgment, the administration might fully enforce its new constraints on travel from eight nations, six of them mainly Muslim. Citizens of Iran, Libya, Syria, Yemen, Somalia, Chad and North Korea, together with some groups of people from Venezuela, would be unable to emigrate to the United States permanently, with numerous barred from also working, studying or vacationing in the nation. On June 26, 2018, the Supreme Court maintained the president's travel restriction by a 5-4 to four vote. Writing for the bulk, Chief Justice John Roberts stated that Trump had the executive authority to make nationwide security judgments in the realm of migration, regardless of his previous statements about Islam. In a greatly worded dissent, Justice Sonia Sotomayor said that the result was equivalent to that of Korematsu v. United States, which allowed the detention of Japanese Americans throughout World War II. Public Charge Rule In August 2019, the Trump administration unveiled a new policy created to weed out immigrants who would potentially require federal government support. Known as the Public Charge Guideline for people who depend on Medicaid, food stamps and other advantages, the policy tightened up requirements for legal immigrants seeking to end up being long-term homeowners by concentrating on factors like education, properties, resources and financial status.